And, uh, well, uh, you know, Gautam, just stay on. Uh, Prashant has put together some data for us. According to an EPFR survey, FIIs are consensus overweight on India. And I'm sure the bulls always like to hear that, right, Prashant? You know, Sony, that's the thing, right? Everything is uh, at upper circuit, right? <laughs> NPLs are low, uh, NIMs are at uh, peak margins for banks. I mean, earnings growth is firing. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's official now. I think we can officially say this is published in so many words by EPFR, which tracks global flows and global funds, etc., uh, that, uh, that India is a consensus overweight market for foreign portfolio investors. This is a report published today. Uh, so uh, that's uh, interesting. What they did basically is that they surveyed 57 emerging market uh, fund managers. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is basically they have a definition for what constitutes consensus overweight. Uh, but according to that, India is now a consensus overweight market. Uh, India is, by the way, the third largest weight in the MSCI Emerging Market Index, right? It's uh, got just under 14% weight. Uh, and MSCI Emerging Market is important because, I mean, it's a global benchmark. Uh, asset allocators use that to uh, put money according to the weights that, may, that countries have. And uh, flows into emerging market funds has also picked up. The data uh, will be up on your screen. Year to date, we've seen some $38 billion of flows uh, come into these emerging market funds. And we get our 13.7%. Uh, but if, I mean, now that we are overweight, perhaps it's more than the 13.7% could be, uh, you know, I think about 14 and a half or percent or so. Uh, there's some other detail in this report that say that sectors in India that significantly outperformed for these funds are uh, state consumer discretionary, uh, consumer staples, and India IT. I mean, these are the three areas. In terms of the style which is doing well, according to the survey in India, they're saying volatility, reversion, FCF growth are outperforming. Dividend yield, sales growth, and earnings momentum are key underperformers. Uh, so uh, that's that's interesting again. Uh, and uh, th there are some other numbers in terms of uh, flows, etc. So, uh, and I kind of go back to that same point again, right? Uh, burden of high expectations, right? We have to lift it, uh, and and there's no other way. So I have a question. When was the year when India had zero expectations? <laughs> and last 10, 15 years, whenever you begin the year, <coughs> expectations are always high. Yeah. It's a different matter that whether those expectations are met or not. Mm. So 2010 to 20, those expectations were not met. There yeah. was one or the other crisis. We are lurking from macro to micro to commodity to geopolitical crisis. Post-pandemic for a year or a two, we met it. Uh, we met yes. those expectations. In fact, 21, we have beaten those Correct. expectations. But do you think uh, that will continue? The 21 performance will continue? Or will again fall back to that 20 to, uh, 2010 to 20 kind of performance? No, I think... Uh, uh, it will be a very calibrated journey from mm. here on because now you know you're not living in a uh, you know very unprecedented kind of situation anymore. Uh, touch wood. Second, uh, expectations will always run ahead mm. of the actual delivery because mm. yeah. people will go back to the memories of 2003 to 8 because you're seeing capex cycle coming back after a long time. Mm. You know, manufacturing uh, it is never part of the conversation for no, almost a now. decade. Absolutely. Right? It's now part of the conversation. And expectations have to be high because <laughs> you're living in a very different world today, you know. When was the last time you saw PSU banks reporting 0.6, 0.7% net NPA mm. and 17, 18% ROEs, mm. right? So, uh, investors no, are... Been massive, you know, yesterday our colleague Abhishek did that story on Bank of Maharashtra and we were mm. just joking that 10 years ago if somebody said Bank of Maharashtra, I mean, you know, you don't want to look at uh, the bank, but bank, a bank like Bank of Maharashtra has got... Uh, is cleaned up in such a massive way. Yeah. And I, mean, I think the total profit, pool, in fact, it used to be a loss pool till FY18 for PSU Correct. banks. Yeah. Correct. Now, the, now SBI alone has done 55,000 crores of uh, profit for FY23. Mm. So, total PSU bank profit pool has crossed 1 lakh crore. Yeah. Yeah. So, these are very different times, and therefore, expectations will always be high. You know, on the point of expectations,